Hello, welcome and good morning, everyone. Glad to see you out here today for our second group webinar of the week, uh, looking at simple strategies for your small group renewal presentations. And I, an apropos topic for this time of year as you are working uh, with your groups in this most busy of seasons. My name is Randy Lober, Learning and Development Specialist here at Action Benefits, and pleased to facilitate the majority of today's conversation with you. Uh, but joining me here today is Jamie Romeo, one of our account coordinators from our group team. Jamie, I want to give you a chance to say hi to everyone before we get started. Good morning, everybody. Uh, thanks for joining us today on this lovely Wednesday, a week before the holidays. I uh, hope you enjoy the hour of spending with us, and uh, please use the chat if you have any questions, but uh, looking forward to seeing how we do today. All right. Thank you, Jamie, for joining us. I'm sure the audience will have some good questions for you. We had lots of good questions from some of these same folks here yesterday. Uh, always glad to see some returnees, especially in the same week. It means we're doing something right over here. Um, so glad to see, see you all here and welcome you through this part of your uh, business or help to guide you through this part of your business. There's three big things we want to attend to today. One is we want to make sure you're up to speed on all the key milestones in the renewal process and the certain dates you'll have to pay, uh, pay attention to when you are setting up your renewals here and moving forward from there. We'll also take a look at some of your essential documents in the renewal package, including one kind of underutilized, hidden, not so secret weapon uh, that's really helpful in figuring out what your group's options might be. And we'll also take a look at a framework uh, to help you plan those renewal consultations, especially if you're uh, newer to the industry, maybe you're renewing one of your first, second, third groups, or this is your first time through this part of the season and you're working through this process. It can be helpful to kind of know uh, get your bearings about what questions you might want to ask as you go forward. So all those ingredients are where, where we'll go here today over the next uh, little bit today. So I also want to kind of narrow the scope of, or define rather the scope of what it is we're talking about here today. As a insurance agents working in the group space, you know that medical benefits and dental and vision aren't the only benefits your groups have. They probably are interested in ancillary products like AD&D, GET policies, group life, everything else under the sun that you might work with and for your groups provide to them. What we are really focused on here today and is the bulk of today's conversation is looking only at that medical renewal. Now dental and vision will renew at this, uh, generally renew at the same time uh, with you as, as well. But frankly, most groups find those a bit more, those costs rather a bit easier to manage. Medical costs, though, is where you have a lot of creativity and a little, a little bit of flexibility to really provide your group some savings. So that's going to be the focus of where we want to uh, on today's conversation. So let's nail down the timelines here. First of all, your renewals as a veteran agents, you know, if you are working in the large group community rated or large group groups, uh, that's fun. Thanks for the terminology, Blue Cross. Um, 120 days prior for large group. So if your group renews on January 1st, you, their renewal was published 120 days prior to that. For your smaller groups, it's published 90 days to their renewal date. And then that kind of second phase, the second column here is that crunch time the, where you are doing uh, the bulk of the work to get the renewal across the line. You're pulling that renewal. You're planning the consultation. You're having that consultation with the group stakeholders. If you need new coverage agreements, you're working with the stakeholders to complete those. You're conducting open enrollment meetings and gathering ECOS forms if enrollments are changing, enrollment change of status forms, uh, to be clear. In a timely manner, uh, which is the, the, the most specific language I'm able to provide uh, for you at the moment, um, is when Blue Cross would expect those benefit changes to be submitted, especially here during busy season, ASAP, especially if you're shooting for a 1-1 effective date, is, is ideal. Um, and then a renewal date happens where new benefits and new rates go into effect. Where we're, well, first, before we uh, kind of even narrow our focus even further, Jamie, is there anything you might want to add or clarify around that timeline or what else our agent should be aware of? Um, no, I mean, everything has been kind of the same as we've been going along over the last several years. Um, I think the only thing that changes is how we pull them and where we pull them. Um, and, you know, we're I know that we're all still adapting to all of that, but um, everything is still the same. And I know this is that part of the training, but the fact that we don't do data collection surveys um, is 
much appreciated, I think, by the agent community. Um, but that's but it didn't change the release of those renewals. So um, no, I think everything else is good. Okay. So to really even uh, drill down where we're going to be talking about here today, we're talking about these three things. How and where do I pull my renewals? Just in case I need a refresher on that. What are some tips for planning that renewal consultation and how do I conduct that consultation with my group stakeholders? So uh, we are gonna start then with pulling renewal packages when and where just for a refresher here on that because there is a fairly new enhancement to one source and by fairly new, I mean in the last year or so uh, that changes where you can access at least your small group renewals. Speaking of which, uh, for your small group renewals, you will always go to bcbsm.com, highlight that agent feature, and enter your credentials, whether you are the agent of record or the associate under that agent. You'll go to the group half of you, that nav bar in the middle of your screen and click login. That will bring you over to OneSource. And when you're in OneSource, uh, there's a few more clicks to get to those renewals. So you, you can either do uh, find your groups one of two ways. You can go to that search bar up on the top and start typing either the customer ID or the group name up there, or you can simply uh, click on my accounts, which shows you all of your book and all of your prospects in the small group market. And you would simply click on the group you are interested in exploring. I note here that in the uh, one source platform, everything that is blue is a clickable link. So if these were not obscured, you would know, for example, that those are all active links. You would see group names and you could pop right over to their group profile. To pull those renewals, uh, they're located in a rather friendly place for you. If you go over to the package summary highlighted there with the red arrow, uh, you're going to go, you're going to see two buttons. One is the group renewal package and the other is the agent renewal package. Um, Jamie, keep me honest here, but the group renewal package actually has a bunch of marketing collateral and educational pieces in it. The agent renewal package is just the one uh, that has all just the renewal documentation, just the facts, man. Is that accurate? Do I have that reversed? Sorry, I lost my screen. Um, no, yeah, I would say 80%. I mean, I, roughly is all marketing uh, information. Um, different things that the Blues are plugging at the time and uh those that are have been around for a while, you, you end up just kind of scrolling through and and looking for the meat, uh, the meat and potatoes of the, of the renewal. Um, so, as the years have gone on, the marketing has gotten heavier in there because they're taking the opportunity, like, hey, this is in front of the group, this is in front of the agent. We're going to take an opportunity to plug X, Y, and Z. Um, they don't always plug the things that we really want to look take a look at and really want to hear about. Um, but nevertheless, yeah, the the renewal for small groups always um, go through the to one source. If you're not able to pull it, put in a, um, a one source assistance request to let the tech area know that you're not able to pull that renewal. Um, large group community rated, you're going to find an e bookshelf, um, not going to be an agent uh, in the one source area. So, yeah, there's different, different areas. Um, that we can, you know, pull this information, but you know, one source is a, a great use to pull the renewal. Plus, it gives you that nice little snapshot on the screen that we're looking at. It gives you a nice snapshot of all the different things, like current plan, what they're going to be renewing with. They'll give you a quick um, viewing of the membership and all that kind of good stuff. Mm -hmm. For all the gripes one may or may not have about one source, the package summary tab is actually really useful because it does show you all those benefits that are currently in effect and that they will may renew over to assuming there's no uh there's no benefit changes of, of course um so highly encourage you to check that out in case your group ever has questions you'll always be able to see exactly what they have right there if you have large group or large group community rate renewals as jamie mentioned you're going to go over to ebookshelf to pull those so you'll start with the agent tab there uh you'll log to bcbsm.com in your blue nav bar you'll find reporting and click into ebookshelf reports and then you will choose the appropriate uh, filter here. Again, for your PPO groups, you're using that 913 or that MOS number for your uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield Michigan groups. For your BCN groups, you'd use that 58 or the NASCO number to uh, find your groups there. And it's as simple as pulling the renewal package uh, that is there for your group. And again, that is only your large group community rated or uh, straight large groups. Small groups will not be found there. 
Uh, Jamie, anything else to add about eBookshelf before we take a look at the renewal package? Nope. That is um, the, the biggest thing here is that third screen. Um, when you're looking at for a PPO, uh, large, group, uh, large group community rated renewal, you're choosing the 913 because that is um, giving you both the room for the MOS number plus the four digit division. You don't need to put the division. Um, the other one that says the five three, or well, the other option, I, I'm forgetting what the other one says, but the other one is for BCN. And that's where you'll see invoices for BCN um, as well as uh, renewal packages. And it, it actually does include small as well as large. Um, and then also rate sheets if a group were to do a group by change uh, mid year. Okay, thank you for the additional clarification. So if we know where to pull our renewals, we spent just a few minutes there, let's dive into the renewal package and what you'll find there. And no matter how long you've been around the industry, it seems there's always a few questions about these documents. So if you're really here for the refresher, uh, this next part is pretty, pretty crucial. So we'll talk a bit about what's in the renewal package. And again, uh, resurface for you perhaps your not so secret weapon when you're helping the group evaluate their options. So the first part you'd want to look at is the RRC or the rate renewal change. So <laughs> uh, when you're looking at the, uh, what does the rate RRC or the rate renewal change do? Well, it shows your changes in, in monthly and annual premiums and shows your projected, uh, projected percentage change there as well. And the reason you want to look at this document or provide it to your groups or they want to take a look at it themselves, it gives them a big picture view of what's happening with their benefits how many billable members they have and uh, where any increases or decreases might be happening throughout their whole benefit package. Those are available when the group's renewal is published and you can always find it in the group's renewal package. The other part we get a lot of questions about is the components of rate change or the cork. Uh, more often than not, you'll hear Blue Cross representatives call it the cork and you're like, my wine bottle, what are you talking about? They're talking about your components of rate change here, or your, your group might be just as confused here. I, I do see a lot of chat activity, I haven't had a chance to read it, but I do see that everyone is chatting directly to hosts and panelists. So if you would like someone else to read uh, your chats, please make sure you're using the right flag there. I'll check in on that in a moment where I have a, when I have a chance to pause. But talking about the court, the court for a minute, um, what it does is it shows you why the rate might be changing for your groups and, and what factors Blue Cross or Blue Care Network are attributing that rate change to. So uh, again, that's available when the group's renewal is published and it is available inside the group's renewal package as well when you pull it. Um, Jamie, if you have more to say about Cork here for just a moment, happy to hear anything you had. But we also do have a, an entire course taught by the wonderful Jennifer Brown in uh, insurability that tells you about all of these uh, components of rate change in some pretty good detail. Uh, Jamie, is there anything else folks might, might want to know about this here at the moment? Yeah, so when it comes to the components of rate change, um, really it's more or less to direct you to insurability because we have um, an article where it is um, thoroughly explained and how what the quirk represents, what it means, the definitions of all of those component uh, topics um and then we also have you know different charts and, and what have you so i know as someone who's been doing this for a long time i still refer to this when needed because really if you're looking at renewals that means that you may get this question one out of every six renewals that you're dealing with or one every other month or something like that so it's, it's not something that is spoken about day in and day out like other items that we work with so I would just really encourage everybody to go into insurability and just type in either the acronym CORC, components or components of rate change, and you're going to see every single thing that we've created uh, regarding this topic. Um, I'm actually looking at both of the articles, like the top two right now in my hands, um, and I keep these on my desktop for situations when, you know, Randy puts me on the spot to, to talk about it, <laughs> or if a question comes in uh, from one of you guys. So, um I really encourage you just to take a look at that. Thank you. And uh, Karen, I re I copied Jamie's reply to you to see if that helps. Let us know if you need more uh, clarification on the secret there. 
Also inside your renewal package is the benefit summary description. And what that does is it shows you changes, if any, in the group's benefit design or the plan name, which all of your groups will be impact, all of your small groups, at least your ACA groups, will be impacted by that this year. So th this group that might have had a simply blue HSA PPO Gold 2000 with elective abortion rider now has in 2024, the 2024 simply blue HSA PPO Gold option two with the elective abortion rider. So all of your groups are seeing a product name change. That is a something handed down by DIFFS, uh, where DIFFS says you can no longer have product uh, cost sharing information inside the product name. Uh, so Blue Cross had to kind of rework the naming throughout their entire small group menu. Uh, so good talking point for you to have in hand as you're coming to your groups with renewals. This document really does help though to show the group of any changes to each of their benefits. Again, it is created when the renewal is published and is inside the group's renewal package. And it's important to point out though, for this group in particular, their deductible has gone up from 2000 to 2500. Um, and you'd see some other changes here as well. So always a good idea to maybe go through that or help the group go through that with a highlighter or so to point out some of those big changes they might wanna be aware of if they make no changes to their benefits, if they renew as is. There's also the benefit and rate schedule. And we as Michiganders tend to swallow the, the N. So sometimes you might hear it as a, a B and R, but it's actually B and R. And what that does is it details the benefits and riders that will be in force upon the renewal. And it gives you uh, information on all their age bands, if it's truly a small group, or it will show you ratings for all the contract types, whether it's single family or double contracts, if you're looking with um, large groups. This is a really key document for you because it helps you confirm the correct benefits uh, that the group is renewing the correct benefits with the appropriate riders. And again, that's available to you inside the package. Um, and by way of illustration, if you're in the small group space, you'll see these age band rating charts show you what your the group could pay if or the members would pay for medical and pharmacy coverage, dental coverage, and vision coverage, again, when they're mem member level rated here, and show you the total for all the benefits that the group uh, offers to them. And again, you'd also have access to those uh, single, double, and family rates uh, for Blue Cross, Blue Shield, and drug coverage here. Um, and down at the bottom, actually, of your large group renewals, you would see your RRLs. And Jamie, are you able to talk, talk to us a bit more about RRLs and how they impact the renewal? Yep. So the RRLs are the um, numbers that are calculated that would encompass the age, the industry, um, and all of the different trends that go into it, such as age, industry, location, um, and that community pool. So RRLs are used by the large group community rated. You have taking kind of taking apart that term of community rating. Um, you are looking at what that community of um, auto service shops and with an average age of X amount, and then in the area of Oakland County. So those numbers are derived from all of those different factors and they look scary. They look really intense, especially if you're looking at like an RX. Sometimes the RX is 11.2175. Again, we are not the uh, the scientists that created those like the formula, but um, please, you know, keep in mind, it's not gonna make that RX rate, you know, in the hundreds of dollars. Well, sometimes it's in the hundreds of dollars, but. Um, that's taking into consideration, you know, age, area, industry, um, and how that's all uh, derived. Yeah, um, is it in short? They're they're kind of a multiplier that goes along with whatever the base rate for that group might be, right? So they they take a look at the risk for that group and kind of adju help adjust the risk and rates that way. Is that accurate to say? Most definitely. Yeah, they have. The base will always be there, and then everything just kind of gets altered, and um, you know, inflation and and all the other factors that that go into what our rates look like. Um, yeah, it's it's harder to describe, yeah, um, without it getting really, really wordy and very defined. So to just say it casually, it's you have your base rate, and then you start factoring in all the other uh, age, industry, and um, locate location. Okay, thank you.
Let's also talk for a moment here about your not so secret weapon. And every time I've, I've given this presentation, there's always a few of you, and I'm going to see it in the chat. I know I will in a few minutes. I've go, oh, that is really cool and really helpful. Let's talk about mileage charts here for a moment. And what those do is they show the estimated percentage change when the group made, makes a change to a different plan. Now, it doesn't show you across carriers. It doesn't show you what happens if I move from a Blue Cross Blue Shield plan to a Blue Care Network plan. But it does show you what I could expect uh, if I moved among Blue Cross Blue Shield plans or among BCN plans. And the real value for your groups here is it helps you and them develop either budget or benefit similar alternatives when renewals come. So they can decide what types of things they want, might want to make changes to. Again, that's uh, available when the renewal is published, but it's also always available inside insurability. Would highly encourage you to either screenshot this article number or write it down, MP00128, because it will always take you to the mileage charts that are currently in force uh, for your groups. And Jamie, correct me if I'm wrong, but these don't always appear in small group renewals, though they do appear in large. Is that accurate? Yeah, that's accurate. Actually, this is one of the first years. I don't remember them being in the small group renewals last year, but I, my memory isn't what it used to be. However, um, it is a great feature that they started to include those in the small group because that's where we see more of the jumping around um, when it comes to, you know, obviously at renewal time and non-renewal time, because those smaller groups are the ones that are getting hit with a smaller, you know, any percentage increase, the smaller group's going to feel it more so than that larger group. Um, so, no, this is fantastic. This is a great, you know, this is one of those ones that you want to like laminate it once you've enlarged it, keep it in your in your bag or, you know, whatever it is that you use for renewals, because this is a, this, this is one of the charts that uh, we, we covet. Uh, we are very um, thankful that we have this. Yeah, and we'll spend some more time with the mileage charts here in uh, the last third of our presentation. Uh, but I want to check in with our agent community here for just a moment. We have a few or a number of veterans here in the room. So I want to hear from you. What have we missed or what tools do you find most useful when you're helping educate your groups about the renewal? Do you lean on the B and R? Do you lean on mileage charts? What is most helpful for you? What knowledge can we share with everyone else here in the room about how you understand and educate the groups? Go ahead and take a few moments to uh, type a sentence or two in the chat. And like clockwork, I reminded you of mileage charts and one of you uh, privately messaged to us that says, oh yeah, that was useful. That is a good reminder. They're thankful that it's included. Um, also seeing other people looking at the components of rate change and being able to describe to the group exactly what's being changed there. Uh, Londa mentions that the mileage chart is the sta starting point, then you can, you can help narrow down from there to specific product floats. And uh, we'll give you some options for that in a moment. Uh, this is a great segue, Londa. There's um, any other strategies that are, that are floating around out there, happy to see those as well. Shelly endorses Londa, but the mileage chart is a great uh, starting point here as well. Uh, we think so too, which is why we're going to dedicate the last third of the presentation to that. Um, Please feel free to keep those coming if, if you've still got your typer's finger, typing fingers working. Uh, but let's talk a little bit about how we can plan and approach that renewal consultation. Admittedly, this session might be built for uh, folks who are newer to the industry, newer to navigating renewals, but never a bad reminder to have. And I also can highlight some of the ways you can use that mileage chart to build conversations with your groups. So when you are building or designing that, that renewal conversation, they're really is and can and should be a design to it. It should be a thoughtful conversation where you're walking the group through their options um, and figuring out what you might narrow down for them and to them and present to them. We think there's probably three big questions you need to consider. One is what are the group's goals for offering benefits? Second, how are you gonna communicate about that renewal to the group? And third, what options should I bring to the table uh, for the renewal consultation? I'm not gonna bring them all 100 some odd plans, right, to, to quote and requote, quote uh, because that's not a good use of my time or a good use of the group's time to look at all those. Um, so how do I help narrow down those options as I kind of take a look at those things? And that's kind of the thought process we want to walk you through here as we go forward. So the first question we're asking ourselves is, what does the group want to accomplish by offering health insurance? Uh, some of you might work with groups who really see health insurance as an obligation, right? So all they want to do is say, 
yeah, we offer health insurance, but it's a it's a plan that's not very benefit rich and it's got a sky high deductible and no, we're not contributing to, UH, to your HSA, but we offer health insurance. Some people, other groups see it as a really a powerful att talent attraction and retention tool, right? So their attitude toward benefits might impact what you bring to them. There's also some good data you can get from employees and enrollment numbers there as well. What do employees appear to value when they're electing their benefits? Are those employees going more toward uh, the higher deductible plans? Do you see uh, employees gravitating towards silver or gold plans? What do those enrollment trends tell you about uh, what employees might want out of their coverage and how does that impact what options you might present? So kind of working at the beginning there to narrow down some good options for you there. Jamie, anything else to add about the group's goals or how else, what else an agent might want to take here? So some of the things are, you know, what's in, you know, lowering the cost to employees, lowering the cost for the employer based on who's contributing what. Um, you know, we know that there are employers out there that are going to put the full cost of the premium on the member, which is going to eat up a lot of that individual's paycheck and how is that you know it's one of those you might as well just go to individual if that was the case but when a group is offering those benefits as we all know um that are rich that are um doing that cost comparison of all right well if it's a 20 dollars difference out of my paycheck per pay period how could this benefit me in the long run because then you are you are potentially lowering your turnover rate um keeping those key and, and um, dedicated employees when we know that there's issue, you know, there's there's uh, staffing issues all over the, you know, the, the country, the world. Um, so it's about keeping and attracting and also attracting key prospects. You know, you, you're trying to some, you know, uh, maybe hire somebody at a C level and you want to offer them some really rich benefits as a bargaining chip. Um, you know, and that's where the whole having a base and a buyout plan could come in. Um, that's where it could be with contributions. You know, I've been getting a lot of questions lately about what's the minimum, what's the minimum contribution for a small group? Well, there isn't a minimum. The group can contribute zero or they can contribute a hundred. The minimums are on the larger group side. Um, so when it comes to this, when it comes to, um, to kind of figuring out the plan, um, it's it's just kind of projecting, looking forward, looking out of you know of the right now and what's to go forward. That's that's what I take away from that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, it's all about finding options that you know help the group balance the competing demands of of managing their budget, but also keeping attracting employees. And every group has their own philosophy with that, as our experienced agents here well know. Second thing you want to think about is communicating the renewal. So now that I know what the renewal is and what the group's goals are, how would I talk about the renewal? Is this, does this group represent, or does this renewal rather, represent something that's pretty in line with what I know about the group's finances and where they want to be? And, or is this something that might present a challenge to them where I would have to prepare for a more difficult conversation and have to be creative in some options for saving for them? Or is this a renewal where they're actually seeing a, a bit of a decrease? Uh, if that happens for your groups, <laughs> yay for them. But if they are seeing a decrease, does that present some options where they might be able to uh, present a, another buy-up option uh, if they have some money in their benefit budget? So those are some dimensions to explore here as well. And you also want to look at whether there's any factors they can contribute with, uh, they can control within the rate change. Um, Obviously, you can't control that your employees age, right? That, that, that always happens. You'll never have control over that. But there might be some other things or some other uh, health, health incentives they could put in place to uh, focus their groups, especially not, or to uh, mediate some of those costs, especially in the large group market. So you're going to always want to ask yourself, based on is what I think, how I think this conversation could go, based, is this a 15% increase and it's going to be rough, or is this a 5% increase that might be a little bit easier to handle? What does that tell me about how I should talk to the group and how I want to frame that conversation with them? And I do want to hear with some from our, some of our more or veteran agents here. What are some best practices you use for scheduling the renewal and conversation? Is it always a call and a meeting? Is it asking for the meeting right away? How do you find uh, 
it to be most successful for you and the group to schedule that renewal con conversation. See some private in, uh, responses coming in here as well. One of the one of you says that we should, you know, it's always worth a call to, to schedule that meeting. Some of you say you might uh, give an email to schedule the meeting here. Um, Shelly is in the email follow up with the call camp. Camp Londa says she schedules that face to face meeting, and I, uh, you know, there's a lot of to be said for that face to face meeting because it is as you know, as your opportunity to get that one good solid hour, hour and a half of that the stakeholders time every year to remind them and showcase the value you bring to them. I'm not gonna pretend to tell you how to, how to do your business by any means, but there is a lot of value in demonstrating your expertise when you're working shoulder to shoulder with someone. Um, so wherever you can, uh, you know, always a good idea to be proactive about this communication and reaching out to your agent or to your stakeholders here. We also want to talk a bit about bringing options and how you figure out which options you're going to bring to the table. So as Jamie mentioned a bit earlier, uh, there is no minimum contribution here in the small group market. So if one way the, the group couldn't help manage expenses, um, one way or the other, right, to either increase their expenses or decrease their expenses is modifying their own contribution strategy. Maybe they see a moderate increase. They don't really want to pass that on to their employees because they're trying to hang on to them tightly. So maybe the group eats a little bit more of that premium cost in the next uh, plan year. Vice versa, maybe they are seeing a bit of an increase. The company itself doesn't have the budget to cover those premium increases is but they want to pass it on to employees, that's an option too, right? It's nothing you're going to find on the mileage chart, but it's always an option for your group. The other thing we should always point out, especially if you have a BCN group, you can always, uh, in select counties at least, look at PCP focus riders, which generally, but not always, result in a 6 to 9% savings on the group's uh, premium, uh, and again, that PCP focus rider narrows the amount of PCPs available to them, but it uh, keeps the same broad network of hospitals and specialists available to you. So that is always an option there as well. Uh, Jamie, before we dig into the mileage chart, anything to add about your contributions or PCP focus strategies here? So when it comes to PCP focus, if there are groups that are interested in, in entertaining that plan, um, please right now for the you know the time that we are you know in the small group market um you can reach out to us or you can go through one source and request what's called a disruption report um this is a report that bcn bcn will provide based on your group to see which doctors would be disrupted so the 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 action of the purpose of the report is in the name to see how your group would be disrupted by the change in, in network um, obviously, you don't want to go in blind. You don't want to deal with the group saying, "Our, you know, it's always the owner and their family. The owner's doctor is no longer participating because he went to this PCP focus. We want to go back. Way easier to, to kind of fend that off by getting this report. Yeah, yeah, great point. Right? If you're going to narrow the network, make sure it, it doesn't uh, cost you in, in seeing out-of-network doctors or put, put doctors out-of-network. So let's talk a bit about mileage charts. I, as veteran agents, I don't need to tell you a lot about these, but just as a refresher, the plan that you're in is uh, down the left, where did my mouse go? It's down the left-hand side here. Uh, the plan that you are interested in looking at a rate change to goes across the top, and you're also going to see what the projected rate change is if the group were to make that change. In yellow are relatively neutral changes. In green are relatively, they're negative changes, which means it's, it's less money for the group. And in red, you're going to see positive numbers. And that means there's a there would be an increase associated with going to that. And you'll also see uh, these this diagonal line of zeros. That's because that's the same plan going to the same plan, which hopefully if they stay in the same plan, uh, there's no additional uh, savings or cost for, for being there. So we did some, uh, took some time and took took a look at these mileage charts in case you need some shortcuts to have in your pocket. Want to give you a few different options uh, to help kind of narrow down what quotes you might present to your groups and some strategies for those. So one option you always have by looking at the mileage chart is keeping the same product line, so staying in Simply Blue or staying in Community Blue, keeping that same metal tier, and choosing the next highest deductible. And generally, if you were to go through the mileage chart, that would net your group anywhere between one to 4% savings. Um, 
not going to, you know, be an earth moving amount by any means, but, you know, especially in small groups where all their profit and loss is kind of there at the margins, one to 4% could be the difference between keeping this benefit package or having considered a more drastic change. So as an example, you could go from a, a community blue patent and PPO option one to an option two and find yourself about a 2% savings from a PPO option one to PPO option two in a simply blue gold gets you 1% and a BCN gold option three to a BCN gold option four gets you 3%. Do you note though that this is a, a, a general rule? It's not, doesn't apply to every situation. And by way of example, you could be looking at a blue left plus HSA POS option one and considering a option two in the same product chassis and, and tier. And that would actually net you about a 1% increase if you were to make that change. Um, again, we're not the actuaries. I, I'm just reporting the facts here, ma'am. Uh, but that, it, so it's, it's, a, it's a good idea to take that with a grain of salt. And by the way, if you are curious about these new plan names, or you're not used to them yet, what I'm really talking about here is, or what, or what you're used to me talking about here, is a Community Blue Platinum $0, 20% to Community Blue Platinum 250, a Simply Blue uh, Gold 500 to Simply Gold 1000, BCN Gold 1500 to BCN Gold 2000, and HSA POS 1600 to HSA POS 2500. And I'll do that more in line next time around. I just want to show you here, uh, help to bring you up to speed with the new blue vernacular. If I wanted to add, oops, if I wanted to add a CDH account, so either an HRA, a, a HSA, or an FSA, and if I wanted to keep in the same product chassis but move to a similar deductible, I could find somewhere between 1% and 10% savings. A wide variety here, I know, uh, but there is, again, some options for your groups. So if I were to go from a Simply Blue PPO Gold Option 4, which was the Simply Blue Gold 2000, to the HRA PPO Gold Option 2, which is the HRI Gold uh, 2000, you could see about 2%. From Gold Option 3, or Simply Blue PPO Gold Option 3 to PPO Gold Option 1, but at the HSA, that does give you that full 10% there. And that's moving from a Simply Blue Gold 1500 to that Simply Blue HSA Gold 1600. From BCN Gold 2000, uh, or BCN Gold Option 4 over to BCN HSA Gold 2500, you're seeing 8% there. And from Gold Option 6 to HRA Option 1 on the BCN side, uh, you are seeing that 1%, and that's a BCN Gold 3000 to an HRA Gold 3000. Um, so some things to consider there. Uh, Jamie, before we work through one more example, anything to add about uh, either changing deductibles or adding CDH accounts as a saving strategy for the group? No, and it's a very common thing that we see oh. adding that CDH account. Um, yeah, that I means there's there's really nothing bad or wrong that can happen by adding a second account and then, uh, you know, just attaching it as a funding arrangement. Keep in mind, you they don't have to use it as an HSA. Um, they can just use it as a high deductible health plan. They'll still get the same savings whether or not they're utilizing health equity or you know any other um, uh, blue sponsored HSA administrator. So um, like, and I think we've mentioned it a couple of times, adding a second plan, adding a base and a buy up, you know, you could throw on the uh, option two or, you know, option four or whatever it might be um, at the HSA level. Um, and it really just, you know, just, as far as the blues are concerned, you just need one person to enroll in it to keep it. So it doesn't, you don't have to have a, um, like an exodus of all these people coming over to the new plan. Um, so definitely, definitely a good move in my opinion. Thank you. Another option you could have in your back pocket is keeping that same product line. So staying in Simply Blue, moving to another Simply Blue plan, but moving to the next lowest metal tier. So moving from gold down to silver or silver down to bronze. Generally, your group's going to see between an 8 to 50% uh, savings by through that option. So from a PPO gold option 7 to PPO silver, uh, the only PPO silver plan, you're going to get 11% there in the Simply Blue chassis. From Simply Blue HSA Silver Option 2 to Simply Blue HSA PPO Bronze, you're going to see that same 11%. 10% um, from BCN Gold Option 7 to BCN Silver. And 14% from Gold 
uh, blue left plus HSA, gold option two, blue left plus HSA, uh, um, silver there would get you that whole 14% there. And again, for to translate, I'm really talking about the simply blue gold 4,000 to the simply blue silver 4,000, simply blue HSA 4,500 to simply blue uh, bronze 7,500, BCN gold 4,000 to BCN silver 5,000, and the uh, BEPHAS HSA rather POS gold 2,500 to that uh, POS silver 3200. So yeah, bigger deductible numbers there, right? But that's part of part and parcel of moving the metal tiers. And as Jamie mentioned, there's some other options your groups have here as well. They can always consider adding a plan up to four plans if they want to try and spread out some of the enrollment and realize some savings in other ways. Your groups can always consider replacing one, some or all of their offered plans with either, either a richer or uh, a less rich plan to uh, really benefit them. And if they're considering those plan switches, generally they're going to see plans fall along a pricing continuum that looks kind of like this. Generally speaking, uh, your PPO plans will be your more expensive plans. Your HMO POS plans are going to be kind of your mid level, the middle point between uh, PPO and HMOs. And your HMO, generally be, uh, speaking, uh, you can expect to be a little bit lower cost and premium. And the product chassis within each of those have kind of their own hierarchy of, of where your groups might expect to spend some premium dollars. Community Blue PPO being the most expensive of these, Simply Blue Routine Care PPO being the least expensive PPO option. Uh, from BCN Fixed Cost being the most expensive to BCN Healthy Blue Living being the least expensive option on that side of the house. Um, so that pricing continuum there is helpful to be aware of. Uh, Jamie, anything to add about these before we ask our agents one more question and get on with our days here? No, and oh, I guess just one comment would be um, make sure that uh, coexistence guidelines are checked. Um, the system does prevent you from um, putting two plans together that cannot exist together. But when showing the plans to the client, um, I, I you know you wouldn't want to see you guys get in a predicament where. You, you show two plans, they love the situation, um, but then it gets to one source, you're submitting the group and it can't go through because of the two plans can't live, you know, not being able to live together. There's not a ton of them, mm -hmm. but you know, it's one of those things, like if it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen. So um, just, you know, be mindful of coexistence guidelines. Again, that's another a document that is on insurability yeah. um, that you can pull. That's a nice desktop little chart that has it all color coded on like the red, is obviously a no-go and then the green um, in that uh, document yeah. is the ones that kind of live together. Yeah. So um, just a, a, a so something to keep in mind when, when presenting those plans. Mm -hmm. And if, if I may, there's a lot of good things to say about one source, but it is one limitation is that they don't tell you that they're, they, you're, you're breaking coexistence rules until, until you're going for the enrollment, you're trying to sell that quote, right? Not to toot our own horn. But coverage for companies does have coexistence guidelines built in in the quoting phase. So you cannot show two plans in coverage for companies that uh, they can't live together. So that could be a good option for you if you're looking to investigate that. But we've talked a lot about some strategies you could use to bring your groups and figure some things out. What I do want to know is why might it be dangerous to have any one of them as a go-to? So why might it be always dangerous to say, Group, you don't like your renewal, I'm gonna bring you down to battle tier and save you some money um, or vice versa. Why is it dangerous as an agent to have one strategy that you always fall back on? Or why could it be dangerous to have one strategy you always fall back? Yeah, Wanda, love the answer. Clients are not one size fits all, right? So we, we give the, the back end of this presentation as some places to start your conversations, right? Or some places to get your mind thinking about where you might wanna go. But your client may want, not want to go there. They, they might value benefits more than you think they do and find more money to allocate there if they're seeing a, an increase, right? Um, so always go with, approach those conversations with an open mind. Encourage you not to have that one answer in your back pocket. Uh, Jamie, anything else to add on that before we wrap up here for our session here this morning? Um, I actually wrote down in my presentation uh, when I was doing my prep for it is exactly not always one size fits all. So I, I basically, uh, you know, almost paraphrased what, or I did paraphrase what Londo was saying. Um, 
this can lead you, you know, if you're a one size fits all type of, you know, agency, that might lead people to find someone who is more flexible with their offerings, more creative. Um, I've listened, I've heard agents, and I was just talking about this with someone not long ago was, I don't like Blue Cross. I'm going to take all my groups to priority. Yeah. That's not a real great yeah. uh, renewal method to go with because that may not work for your, you know, for, for a handful of the groups. Um, and that's a pretty aggressive uh, mindset to have because they don't like something. Um, it's not about what the agent likes. It's about what you guys, what the group likes. You know, it's, yes, you have to feel comfortable with what you're selling, but what fits your group? So that's that's something that whenever I would hear that from an agent, I was like, mm, okay then, well, all right. Yep. Um, but, but while we have your your captive attention, I, I think echoing a lot, a lot of those comments uh, work just well for, for most situations. Your clients are not one size fits all. And it works even better for you to build that long lasting business relationship, that personal relationship, when you really come in as a partner and not just a, 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 a here sign this a robot, as it were. Before we go here today, I do want to give you a parting gift. Um, it does capture a lot of the conversation here we have today. You'll see this in the chat in just a few moments. Uh, especially if you're just starting out here on this path and maybe you're rethinking your approach to renewals, kind of captures a lot of the conversation we had today. Get, ask you some questions about how the group thinks about benefits. Ask you some questions about what the group looks like and how they're thinking about things and helps you narrow down some thinking and also capture some of the strategies we talked about here on the back end. And I'll put this in the chat for you in just a moment. Um, good resource to have on hand for you to go ahead and print out. Uh, think through it. Maybe your first two, three renewals, you, you lean on it as a crutch as you're thinking about it. Uh, but sooner or later, maybe it becomes second nature to, to you. you. You don't even need a, a, a process like this. Um, but I'll, I'll get that to you in the chat in just a moment or so. Uh, and... I'll give that to the chat, actually, as you are doing one more favor for me. Um, what I want to know from you, what Jamie I also wants to know from you, and she doesn't know this, that she that she wants to know this, um, but she does now. She wants to know, what did you find as agents? What did you find most helpful about today's session? And what do you wish that Jamie and I spent more time on? And while you're typing up some answers there in the chat, I'm going to go ahead and put that uh, guide for you in, in that chat window as well. Okay. So Shelly appreciated the conversation about the mileage chart and, and additional knowledge about PCP focus. At least I think that was helpful. I'm uh, hoping that was. Um, <clears throat> having a refresher on how to find things. Thank you, Londa, for that feedback here as well. Also, again, let us know if there's anything you want to spend more time on or if this, there was a 201 version of this class. If we wanted to uh, bring this up a level, what else would you want to see as part of it? Please feel free to include that as well. You'll also notice just above Shelly and Londa's replies, there is a chat from me. That PDF is safe to download, I promise. That is the renewal guide, or the, the thought guide we put together on the screen here just a few moments ago. Uh, go ahead and get that before we leave here today, or, or if you'd like me to email to you, if we can do that here as well. Should you have any questions about what Jamie and I talked about today, or you need any help with your renewals, our group team is always here to help. Uh, you can find them at mygroupsupport at actionbenefits.com or 866-501-8727. Jamie, before we sign off for the day, uh, any parting words for our folks here as they uh, get back to their busy season? Jamie's thinking about her. Oh, there she goes. Yeah, you know, so I'm actually talking to Carl right now. All right. So oh. I apologize for uh, <laughs> removing myself from the uh, webinar. But um, please let us know if you guys have any questions. My group support at actionbenefits.com is the best way to get a hold of us. Um, we're happy to help you guys walk through things before uh, before the or the big changes come into play. So I don't know if I just completely spoke offline or out of turn what you were just <laughs> saying, but when I when I get FaceTime with Carl, I I will take it. Yeah, that's fine. You were talking to the okay. big cheese. I get it. You, you know okay. it. You know it. <laughs> All right. Um, then on behalf of Jamie and the entire Action Benefits team, I do want to thank you all for your time and attention here today. I always love the opportunity to spend some time with our agents and help them uh, get, you know, get that refresher they might be looking for or bring new agents up to speed. Uh, happy to stick around for any questions you might have. We're going to stop the recording here uh, so I don't have to edit it out a little bit later.